Hi, this is a little overview of the latest version of Frog, which is online at chillyfrog.ch. And we really spent a lot of time trying to make it um, usable for teachers who don't really know much about it. Um, so we have this landing page here um, that we need to work a bit more on the content and the video and stuff like that. The idea is that you can sign in as a, you can create an account, but you don't even need to do that. You can just click on try it out now. And uh, here we have uh, some choices. So we have some single activities. Um, basically, this is when you just want to run, you know, a single activity, like you would uh, run a, a poll or, a, you know, any of these, these websites are out there. Um, and templates, they are um, things that are a little bit more uh, complex with multiple activities following each other. So let me first show you, for example, a brainstorm. Uh, so we say that we want to configure a brainstorm and we have some options here. So we could, for example, specify some guidelines like where do you want to go on vacation this year? And uh, most of these options uh, should be okay. So we'll just go to create. And now it's saying, hey, you know, you might want to create an account because it's easier to find your stuff again. But in this case, we'll just skip that and we'll continue as guest. And right now we have uh, an, a session. So I can go and show you the student interface. So the students would go to learn.chillyfrog.ch. And when they go there, they see um, interface asking them to join a session. So we're going to type in the code. They could also just do learn.chillyfrog.ch slash and then that session. So if you want to put a link somewhere, you can do that. You can also still embed it in Blackboard or Canvas or edX or anywhere else. So there's different options for students to join a session. So now we're logged in and we're waiting for the teacher to start a session. And of course, the teacher here can start a session. So teacher starts the session. We see here, um, that the teacher can also participate. Here's the brainstorm for the students. So the student might say, I'd like to go to Grand Canaria. And the teacher could say, I like San Francisco. And they can vote these things up and down. Um, so that's how this activity works. Um, Again, the goal is really to make it as simple as possible for the teacher to get started with this. Um, and we can close this activity and now that's it, it's over. So that was one way of, of uh, working with uh, Frog and we have, as I showed you, a few number, a few different activities. Um, I'm gonna uh, show you just creating an account now. So I'm gonna sign up for a new account. And um, one thing you'll notice is that when I sign up for an account, it actually gives me access to the sessions that I created as a uh, anonymous user. So what we're trying to do here is to make it very easy for people to get started, but then hopefully at some point they'll be interested in um, creating an account and then they'll still have access to the things they did. Um, so I'm gonna go here and create with wizard which gives us back to this page. And this time I'm going to do a peer review flow. So here we basically have four stages. So we ask the students to write something, then we do a peer review. Then there's a revision where the students can revise their writing based on the feedback. And then there's a little gallery walk where uh, we can show what the students produced. And when we configure, this configuration is structured around these stages. So we can um, first of all decide whether students should do their writing individually or in groups. So let's have them do it individually for now. Um, the initial writing prompt is, how is Dante represented in La Divina Comedia? And then we say, well, how many reviews should each student see? So here we can say they get to see two a review, they get to see two pieces of their of writing from their fellow students and maybe the review prompt is um, how could this contribution better analyze the social 
relationships. Okay, and then you get back to feedback and we get you to write. So we could say, um, how can the feedback help you improve your writing? Something more generic. And then for the debrief, we can choose to only show um, the student writing on the projector or we can also show it on student screen. So let's also show it on student screens. And when we're done, we do create. And um, we're now here and we have this list of activities that have been pre-configured for us. Um, we can close this now and we see here that we can just go back to it there. So it's easy to find. Um, now for this case, I'm going to use this little feature where we open for test students um, because it's going to be easier for you to see uh, what's actually going on. But in a real classroom, of course, you would have all the students log in normally. But this is just to demonstrate for you. Here we have four different students. So each student would just see this little window and they're all waiting for the teacher to start. So the teacher starts the session and here the teacher sees what the students are seeing but it's a preview. So here the teacher is not supposed to type. Um, teacher can type if he, wants, he or she wants to demonstrate, um, but it doesn't actually affect activity. Also, if the teacher doesn't want to show all of this um, stuff to the students, he can click open a new tab and uh, he gets a separate tab that only shows this preview um, and he can put that on the projector. Uh, of course, the students are also seeing this, so they might start typing. They can say, um, as an adventure, as a modern spirit, as a traveler, as a challenge. I don't know. So they would be working on this for a while. Now, while they're working on this, uh, here we see the students who are logged in. Uh, and while they're working on this, for the teacher, we are interested in what the students are typing. Here in this dashboard, we can follow in real time as the students are typing. Um, I'll show you how that works if we put this side by side. So I'm going to put that over there and this one over there. And you'll see that um, as I am editing this document, it reflects on the dashboard immediately right so you can see here um, that ch so for the teacher it's easy to monitor a large amount of students as they're typing and when this teacher thinks that they're uh, done he can go back uh, he can go to the next activity and as you'll remember the next activity was peer review so here for Chen Li he's gotten two contributions as a traveler and as an open spirit and for each contribution, he gets this prompt. How could this contribution better analyze the social relationships, right? So I'm going to just put in some text here just to demonstrate. Again, the teacher, um, the teacher could um, look at the dashboard to see how this peer review is going. And when he's happy with that, he goes to the next activity. Here we see that I have my text back. So this is what I wrote initially. Here are the pieces of peer review that I got. And here's the prompt. How can the feedback help you? So I can say, well, interesting that A and B, right? So I can improve. Again, the teacher can go and look at the dashboard. And when the teacher is happy, we go to the last activity, which is basically just showing the pieces of text to the whole class. And in this case, because we chose that the student should also have access to these um, pieces, then each of the students, as you can see, also have it and they can look at it locally. Whereas if we had chosen only show it on the projector, then this would be blank and it would only be showing for the teacher. Sorry. Right. And once we're happy with that, we can close the session. So the session is complete. So for the students, um, they see that the session is complete. For the teacher, he can go back and look at the different dashboards and this will be available for as long as uh, he's around. 
he can also um, take this uh, this information and export it to the wiki. So, um, for example, this gallery, we might want to export that to a wiki page. Let's create a new class wiki. So we'll call it Dante and we'll call this um, texts. So this is a new wiki called Dante and we're creating a page called texts. And now we can go and open the wiki. Uh, sorry, wiki Dante. And we see here that there's a new wiki called Dante. It has one page, it's called texts. And here we have the four texts that were written by students. And so um, this is a wiki that we can give to students so that they can have access to what they wrote and they can keep um, working on it. And uh, we still have access to um, the advanced graph editor, which is what used to be the core of ROG and advanced preview. Um, so this will be used in some classes where students are really learning how to write their own graph. Um, but uh, this is something we worked a lot less on making um, really user friendly. So we're making it available. We're really trying to hide it from, from teachers um, to not um, confuse them or overwhelm them if people come in um, using Frog and not being interested in, in that.